Hi. It is always a joy to see you, visiting our channel, a warm welcome back. In the last four videos we all saw the faithfulness and bravery, of these people called the Waldenses. The messenger of truth went from place to place with the word of God, but his appearance of humility, his sincerity, his earnestness, and deep fervor, were subjects of frequent remark. In many instances his hearer had not asked him whence he came, or whither he went. They had been so overwhelmed, at first with surprise, and afterward with gratitude and joy, that they had not thought to question him. When they had urged him to accompany them to their homes, he had replied that he must visit the lost sheep of the flock. Could he have been an angel from heaven? They asked, in many cases the messenger of truth was seen no more. He had made his way to other lands, he was wearing out his life in some unknown dungeon, or perhaps his bones were widening on the spot where he had witnessed for the truth. But the words he had left behind could not be destroyed. They were doing their work in the hearts of men, the blessed results will be fully known only in the judgment. The Waldenses missionaries were invading the kingdom of Satan, and the powers of darkness aroused to greater vigilance. Every effort to advance the truth was watched by the prince of evil, he excited the fears of his agents. The papal leaders saw portent of danger, to their cause from the labors of these humble itinerants. If the light of truth were allowed to shine unobstructed, it would sweep away the heavy clouds of error that enveloped the people, it would direct the minds of men to God alone and would eventually destroy, the supremacy of Rome. The very existence of this people, holding the faith of the ancient church, were a constant testimony to Rome's apostasy, and therefore excited the most bitter hatred and persecution. Their refusal to surrender the scripture was also an offense that Rome could not tolerate. She determined to blot them from the earth. Now began the most terrible crusades against God's people in their mountain homes. Inquisitors were put upon their track, and the scene of innocent Abel falling, before the murderous Cain was often repeated. Again and again were their fertile lands laid waste, their dwelling and chapels swept away, so that where once were flourishing fields and the homes of an innocent, industrious people, there remained only a desert, as the ravenous beast is rendered more furious by the taste of blood, so the rage of the papists was kindled to greater intensity by the sufferings of their victims. Many of these witnesses for a pure faith were pursued across the mountains and hunted down in the valleys where they were hidden, shut in by mighty forests and pinnacles of rocks. No charge could be brought against the moral character of this proscribed class. Even their enemies declared them to be peaceable, quiet, pious people. Their grand offense was that they would not worship God according to the will of the Pope. For this crime, every humiliation, insult, and torture that men or devils could invent was heaped upon them. When Rome at one time determined to exterminate the hated sect, a bull was issued by the Pope Innocent VIII, AD 1487, condemning them as heretics and delivering them to slaughter. They were not accused as idlers, or dishonest, or disorderly but it was declared that they had an appearance of piety and sanctity that seduced the sheep of the true fold. Therefore the Pope ordered that malicious and abominable sect of malignants, if they refused to abjure, to be crushed like venomous snakes. Did this haughty potentate expect to meet those words again? Did he know that they were registered in the books of heaven, to confront him at the judgment? Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, said Jesus, you have done it unto me. Matthew 25, 40 This bull called upon all members of the church to join the crusade against the heretics. 
As an incentive to engage in this cruel work, it absolved from all ecclesiastical pains and penalties, general and particular, it released all who joined the crusade from any oaths they might have taken, it legitimatized their title to any property which they might have illegally acquired, and promised remission of all their sins to such as should kill any heretic. It annulled all contracts made in favor of the Waldenses, ordered their domestics to abandon them, forbade all persons to give them any aid whatever, and empowered all persons to take possession of their property. This document clearly reveals the master spirit behind the scenes. It is the roar of the dragon, and not the voice of Christ, that is heard therein. The papal leaders would not conform their characters to the great standard of God's laws, but erected a standard to suit themselves, and determined to compel all to conform to this because Rome willed it. Corrupt and blasphemous priests and popes were doing the work which Satan appointed them, mercy had no place in their natures. The same spirit that crucified Christ, and that slew the apostles, the same that moved the bloodthirsty Nero against the faithful in his day, was at work to rid the earth of those who were beloved of God. The persecution visited for many centuries upon this God-fearing people, were endured by them with a patience and constancy that honored their Redeemer. Notwithstanding the crusades against them, and the inhuman butchery to which they were subjected, they continued to send out their missionaries to scatter the precious truth. They were hunted to the death, yet their blood watered the seed sown, and it failed not of yielding fruit. Thus the Waldenses witnessed for God, centuries before the birth of Luther. Scattered over many lands, they planted the seeds of the Reformation that began in time of Wycliffe, grew broad and deep in the days of Luther, and is to be carried forward to the close of time, by those who also are willing to suffer all things for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 1, 9 Although some were burned in Toulouse, France, in the 13th century, and massacre in Marindal, France, in 1545, just to name a few places. This did not stop them from being a faithful, God-fearing people, as we come closer to the end of this world, this same persecuting church will arise again to do the work of Satan. As we see these same power reveal itself, let's hold on to God's holy word, it is our only safety in this evil world. Let's strive to develop character like the Waldenses, who were willing to die for their faith in God. Please like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. Remember to come back to see God's hand in world's history, God bless, see you in the next video.